Hello and welcome to another Construct 3 tutorial series. Hopefully this will stay a fairly short series. In this set of videos, we are going to be making three different versions of a mini map. The versions that we are going to be making are from examples that I've taken from uh, fairly popular games. The first one we're going to do is a full static map that hides in the corner of a screen while you're playing. A good example of this would be something like you would see in League of Legends or Dota 2, where you are able to see the whole map in one small square. So these projects are set up to be guides. This is not a game that we're creating. We will make these separate files so that you can have them to reference for any project that you have going on personally. It's really the code and the calculations and the approach that I am sharing with you. And before we get started, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. This does help a creator like myself out quite a bit. Okay, let's jump into this project. I am going to start a new project. I'm just going to give this a name. This will be uh, Minimap V1. I'm going to leave mine at 1280 by 720. You can optimize for pixel art. I'm not going to because we really don't need it for the sake of this project. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Couple things right off the bat. Usually I state whether or not this can be done with the free version or not. Some of it can be. You can get started at least if you have the free version. But this project is really set up more for those who have something already in the works, which would usually indicate that somebody is working in the paid version of Construct 3. We're going to get to a point where we have to create more than two layers. The free version of Construct 3 allows for two layers. We are going to surpass that at some point. The other thing I want to mention before we get started is that as with anything that I do on this channel, and any other tutorial you read anywhere else on the internet, there is almost always more than one way to do something in game development or just programming in general. But understand that the way that I explain it is not always, almost never, the only way to do it. Okay, I'm going to click on the layout, and that gives us our layout properties. I'm going to change the size. Right now it's a width of 2560 and a height of 1440. I'm going to change the height to say 2560, that way uh, we have one giant square that we can make our level in. This is gonna be our world. And then our viewport is 1280 by 720. I'm going to keep it that way. And before we go any further, let's go up here and save the project. Just give it a name and save it somewhere where you know where your project file is located. Okay, I'm going to create a very small, very basic project to base this mini map feature around. First things first, we're going to create a background. So double click anywhere on the layout and let's scroll down to tiled background and insert it anywhere. And I'm going to change the size to 128 by 128. And then I'm going to get our fill tool and in the RGB tab, I'm going to change some of these values, uh, the red to 125. Let's change the green to 105, blue to 85. That gives us this kind of light brown color and I'm gonna fill our square. And then I'm going to change the color in the RGB tab. The red, I'm gonna come down to 80, the green down to about 65, and the blue down to, let's say 55. And then I'm gonna get the pencil tool. I'm gonna zoom in here. And I'm just gonna make a quick design. And actually, I'm going to increase the size of my pencil. Let's do eight. Actually, I'm going to maybe go down to four. And I'm just going to create a few of these. This is just going to help give our background a little bit of texture so that when we start moving across the level, we will actually see that we're moving. Because if we don't have anything in our background, then it's hard to tell if our character is moving. Just something real simple like that. And then I'm going to get a different color. I'm going to go 110 for red, 95 for the green, 75 for the blue. And just make some little, like little specks. These are kind of like highlight and shadow. Just something like that. Very random. And then let's do one more color. I'll go 145 for the red, 125 for the green, 100 for the blue. 
This gives us a nice light highlight type of color. And I'm gonna take it down to a size of two. And then just uh, add a few more little specks. We can exit out of that. And I'm gonna move this up towards the corner and actually click on the layout and go to snap to grid and set the grid size to 32 comma 32. And then we can snap it into place in the top left corner and drag the bottom right corner down to the bottom right of the layout. And there is our ground texture. This will help us see that our player is moving when we are navigating through a large open world. Okay, let's go over here to the layers panel. My layout of Construct 3 probably looks quite a bit different than yours. That actually affects nothing other than my eyes as I look at the screen. But you should have a layers panel. And in that layers panel, we have our default layer, layer zero. I'm going to click on it and rename it background. And then in that layers panel, if we right click and add a layer to the top, I'm going to call this one level. So now that we have a background layer with our background on it, we can lock that layer. That way we don't accidentally move it. And then select the level layer and double click on the layout and scroll down and let's get a sprite. Insert it anywhere. And I'm going to change the size to 64 by 64. And then I'm gonna get a nice little green color and this is going to represent our player. Get our fill tool, fill it in. I'll zoom in a little, and then I'm just going to get my eraser tool and just kind of round off the corners here. Okay, just a quick little artwork. And get a black color and the pencil tool. And I'm gonna make this a four. And I'm going to turn my grid on and say maybe eight by eight. And I'm gonna turn the snapping off too. And actually let's do an eight. There we go. And then just position it something like that and that. And then let's do another one right there. All right, let's get our origin tool and put it right in the middle. And then make sure that the collision box is set to bounding box and we are done with that with that selected let's rename this player and while we still have it selected let's go into edit behaviors and add a new behavior and scroll down to movements and choose eight direction and i'm going to put him up here in our window we see this little outline right here that is our viewport for now i'm just going to place him right there in the window we can play this and now that is our working player. It's awfully slow. So I'm gonna come over here to the player's properties and the eight direction behavior. I'm going to bump the max speed up to 600, the acceleration up to 1000, and the deceleration up to 2000. I want eight directions, smooth, and we'll keep the default controls. I'll play that. And there we go. A little bit better movement, I think. Okay. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to move our player off to the side for right now. We'll come back to that. And while we're still on the level layer, let's double click and insert another sprite. I'm going to resize this to 64 by 64. I'm going to turn the grid off. I'm gonna go into my paint bucket tool and I'm going to get a gray color. I think that looks good right there. And I'm gonna fill it. And then with the origin tool selected, let's go to the bottom left. We can exit out of that. With that selected, I am going to rename this buildings. This is gonna represent the buildings that we would have in our level. We're gonna to have to use our imagination through most of this. Imagine this as a uh, town or a city layout and that there would be artwork in your game. So if you had several buildings in your game, you would create a sprite that would represent those. And then you would cover your buildings with this sprite. So I'm going to click on the layer and select show grid and make sure snapping is turned on. And I am going to build an imaginary level. 
So we can just place this sprite somewhere and drag out using our guides and snapping to determine the size and shape of our buildings. And then we can control, click, and drag out a copy and uh, make another type of building. So I'm going to run through and make a short little world. You can do the same. Size and placement really doesn't matter. We just want to make sure that we have enough room for our player to navigate in between so that we can reach the corners and all sides of the map. So I'm going to lay my level out real quick. Go ahead and do the same. All right, so I have a, a little layout going here. I'm going to select our buildings object and go into the behaviors and add a new behavior and add a solid. And if we drag our player into our viewport up here and play, now we have something for our player to interact with and move around. And this is what would represent uh, our buildings if you had artwork in your level. Of course, you'd want to change these to be initially invisible in their properties. I'm going to create a barrier around our level as well. So let's double click and go back down to Sprite, insert it wherever. I'm going to resize this to 64 by 64. And let's put that origin in the bottom left and get our paint bucket tool. And I'm going to pick a very light gray, maybe something like that, and fill. And we can exit out of that. And with that selected, let's rename this wall. And I'm going to zoom in and just place this to where it creates a border around, but not overlapping our layer. Out like that. And then we can control, click, drag out a copy to the other side. Move that up just one. And then control click and drag out another copy. This one we're going to have to resize the other direction. We can stretch that out that way. And this one over this way. And then same thing here. Control click, drag out a copy to the bottom. Okay, now we have us a little border wall that uh, is outside of our viewport, so we can't see it yet. But one thing we do want to do is give our wall a solid behavior like we did our buildings. So make sure the wall object is selected. Go to behaviors, add a behavior, and give it a solid. Okay, let's get something so we can move our player anywhere around the level and we can follow it. So I'm going to make an object for our camera. So let's double click anywhere on the layout and let's get another sprite. I'm gonna place it just somewhere over off to the left-hand side, and I'm gonna change this size to, I'm gonna go 32 by 32. I'll zoom in a little. I'm gonna get the circle and a nice bright red color and a border thickness of one, uncheck fill, border checked for this, and start in the top left, drag down to the bottom right, and we get a circle. And then I'm going to add some lines in the middle. And then I'll get a white color and fill in these spots. The origin tool, place it right in the middle. And I'll exit out of that and rename this camera. And while it's still selected, let's go to the behaviors. Edit behavior, add new behavior, and let's get scroll to. So now we can go into our event sheet and let's add an event, go into system and I'm going to type in start and we want on start of layout. Let's add an action, get our camera and I want to set the position to another object and that is going to be our player object. Okay. And in our layout, we can put our player anywhere we want, hit play and the camera has scrolled to our player. All right, as an added bonus, let's go back to the event sheet, add an event, go into system, type in every tick, and let's add an action, get our camera, and we want to set the position again. This time we're going to pick just set position, 
And for the X value, we're going to use the LERP expression. So type in LERP parentheses, and we want to LERP from the camera position. So camera dot X comma to the player. So player dot X comma, and I'm going to give that value a 0 0.1 and in parentheses. And then I'm going to just highlight all of that, copy it and paste it into our Y and change all the X's to Y's. Okay, so if we play, now we have a smoother camera. The view won't jerk around and uh, give us headaches. Okay, I wanna be able to see beyond the edge. I don't want our player to end up on the edge of the screen. So if we go back over to our layout tab and click on the layout, bring up its properties, there's this little box unbounded scrolling. If we check that, it will not bound us to the edges. We can play that again. And now if we go to the edge, we see what is in the void beyond our layout. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of that. And the reason that it is gray is because our background, our default layer, comes to us not transparent, and the background color is that gray. If I check the box to make it transparent, now there won't be any color there, it should just be black, okay? One last thing for our setup here. So now that we have our camera worked out, we can click on the camera, select it in the project, and come over to the properties, scroll to the bottom, and uncheck initially visible, and that will just still follow our player around without having the camera object seen, okay? All right, that is gonna do it for the setup for this project. If you are following along with my project, then we now have our level setup that we will use for all three versions of the map. So let's make sure you're saving, and now we can get started on our first version of the mini map. So the first thing we're going to do is create a layer for the map. Let's right click in our layers and add a layer to the top. I'm gonna to call this map. And with this map layer selected over in the properties, I'm going to change the parallax to zero comma zero. And that just makes it to where this layer stays in one place at all times. And it'll be the size of the viewport. Let's make sure we're still on our map layer and let's double click and grab a new sprite and we can place this wherever. And the origin point needs to be in the top left because we're going to reference this origin point. And then I want to give this a dark grayish color. Let's just do 50s across the board here. Red, green, and blue, all 50 and fill. Then we can exit out of that. With that selected, I'm going to rename this mini map. Now, if we zoom in here, this is going to be our map and it's gonna go up in the top left corner for this project. And I wanna determine the size of the map. I'm going to try to figure out what I think is a good size. So if I play that, I think that that might be, I don't know, it's not a bad size, maybe a little smaller. Let's try that. Okay. So I like that. That's gonna be a good size. It doesn't take up too much of our screen. We can still see what we're dealing with, but it's gonna be big enough for us to see what's going on in the map. Okay, here's where we start doing a little bit of math. I'm gonna to go to a website called percentagecal.com. And what we have over here is our layout, which is 2560 by 2560, and our map, which is also a square, of 128 by 128. So I wanna know what percentage this map is of our total area that we're going to be mapping out. So if we go into this website here, down here it says blank is what percent of blank? Well, I wanna know what 128 is, what percentage of 2560? Five, five percent. And in decimal form, five percent is 0 0.05. So five, a nice rounded number. I think that's something we can work with. So this is saying that this map, the size of this map is 5% of this whole playable area. 
we're going to need to reference that 5% a few different times in our code. And then the other thing we want to do is determine where the map is. I have the snapping turned on 32 by 32. That is the corner of our screen. Remember, we put these walls outside of the layout. I don't want it right in the corner of the screen like that. That just looks weird. So if I bring it in 32 by 32 on the X and Y, I think that's a good place for it. It's stuffed away in the corner, but it's not all weird and awkward looking up against the screen. So I'm going to go with 32, 32 for the X and Y coordinate. And now we can create some icons that will represent what we want to show on our map. So off to the side on the layout, I'm going to double click and create a new sprite. And this is on our map layer. And I'll insert this off to the side. I'm going to resize this to 16 by 16. And if I zoom in, I'm going to get my line tool, uh, thickness of one, and I'm going to pick a red color. In fact, I'm just going to type it in uh, 200 for the red, 85 for the green, 80 for the blue. It gives me this kind of somewhat desaturated red color. And I'm going to make a triangle. This is going to be our player icon. This represents where our player is on the map. And then I'll just fill that. And it needs to point to the zero. This is how degrees work inside the Construct 3 engine. Zero is to the right. And then it goes around, down and around and back to 360. So we want our angle to be facing the zero. Okay, let's get our origin point. And instead of right in the middle, this icon is going to rotate and it's going to rotate around the origin point. And if the origin point's right here in the middle, it's going to rotate what looks like kind of the top of the triangle, really. So I'm going to move it back to uh, six on the X and eight on the Y. And then we can exit out of that. With that selected, let's rename this. I'm going to give this a prefix of icon and then underscore player. That way all of our icons can have this icon prefix in the object name. Okay, I'm going to place this just wherever inside the boundaries of our black square or dark gray square. And if we play, there's our little icon right there. And because it's on the map layer, it does not move when our player moves. So let's hop over to the event sheet. And in our every tick event, I want to add an action, go into our icon player. And this says every frame of the game, we want to update this value. And I'm going to set the angle to the player dot angle. So any angle the player is facing, the icon is going to point that same direction. Because our player, we made it to face to the right, which is the zero degree as well. So if we play this, now every time I rotate the player, the player icon turns and points in the direction our player is facing. Okay. Now I want to move our player icon across this mini map to match the location of where our player is on our level. And remember the math that we did was this mini map is 5% of all of this. So if we take the coordinates of wherever our player is and multiply it by 5% and then reference the origin of our mini map, it should put us exactly where our player is in relevance to the size of the map. So in our event sheet, in our every tick event, let's add another action, get our icon player, and we want to update the position. So set position, and we want to get, I'm going to just hit done for right now, so we can go back and see this. The reference that we want from our mini map is the origin, which is in the top left. You can see that little dot right there. That's the origin point. And the origin point is at 32 by 32. So we just want to know wherever the mini map starts its origin, then we'll add the position of our player in pixels. So in our event sheet, let's go back into this position for the X. Let's get that mini map X origin. Minimap.x plus 
And then I'm just going to do an equation in between parentheses because I want this to be calculated separately. That is going to be our player's x, player.x times 0 0.05. That'll give us 5% and then in parentheses. So the way this works is we actually really don't even need parentheses in this equation. But as we move further in this series of videos, we're going to be adding a lot more into these coordinates. It's good practice now. I want player x times 5% to take place first. So that'll give us a value. And then our mini map x coordinate, which is 32, will be added onto that value. Okay, let's do the same thing for the y. Mini map dot y plus our player's x, or our player's y actually, multiplied by 0 0.05 in parentheses. Okay, now let's play that. And if we go all the way to the edge, uh, you see that it stops about where we put the origin point in the icon. So this is actually correct because I think our icon is a little big as far as representation goes. So I'm going to go into our layout and I'm going to select our icon player and I'm gonna change the size. It's at 16 by 16. I'm going to lower it down to, let's say six comma six. That way it's only six pixels. And if we play that, uh, we have a little bit better looking thing going on here. I'm a little more satisfied with that. That's definitely something you can play around with if you would rather it be bigger. But I think we can still see that it is a arrow pointing in the direction our player is moving. And once we get the buildings and everything in our map, I think this size will make a lot more sense. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of that. If you haven't been saving, go ahead and do so. I'm going to make another icon. Let's double click on the layout and get another sprite. Make sure you're on the map layer and insert that. And this doesn't really matter, but I'm going to take the size down to, uh, let's go 64 by 64. I'm going to put the origin in the bottom left, and then let's get our paint bucket tool here. And I'm going to get a gray color, something like that. We have 187, 186, 186, that's good. Something kind of bright to pop off the darker colored mini map. And then we can exit out of that. And with that selected, let's rename this icon underscore buildings. So I want this building icon to represent all of these buildings that we have in our world. But I want them to appear within the mini map at the precise location they would be if they were shrunk down to this size. So let's go into our event sheet. We have our on start of layout event up here. I want this next event to occur on the start of layout and I only want it to happen the one time as we start the game. So if we select the whole on start of layout event, we can press B on the keyboard, that'll give us a sub event and then double click to go into it Go to system and type in for each, and we want the for each loop. So we are going to loop through, and we'll choose the object, all of the buildings that we have created in our layout. So select buildings, and make sure it's the building object, not the icon buildings. We want just our regular buildings object. We can hit done, and we're gonna loop through all of them. That means it's gonna start with the first one we created, and it's going to go through every single one of these and perform this code. I wanna create an icon for each building that exists. So add an action, go into system, and create object. And that object is going to be the icon building. The layer is going to be, in quotation marks, map, and we're going to use the same math we did for our player icon, but just reference the buildings instead. So for the X value, we want to get the origin point of our mini map and then add the distance of each building location. In our X, let's type in minimap.x plus, and in parentheses, we want to know where the building is. So buildings.x and then multiply it 
by our 0.05 and then do the same thing for the y. Minimap dot y plus in parentheses buildings dot y times 5% end parentheses. Okay, let's see what that looks like. A big mess. <laughs> it created all of them, but it created all of them at 64 by 64 in size. So on our layout, this object was created at the right location. It was just created at this size. So it's a big blob of icons. So in our for each loop here, each time it cycles through a building and creates an icon and places it, we can also resize it. So let's add an action, go into our icon, icon building, and we want to set size. The width is going to be the width of that building that we are currently in within the loop. So buildings.width times 0 0.05. And then for the height, we want the buildings.height multiplied by 0 0.05. And there we go. We have the exact layout that we created on the layer. And as our player runs into a building object on the inside our world, it references that exact position on our map. Okay, perfect. Okay, this is going to be just an added aesthetic that you may or may not want to add. I'm going to create a border around our map. I just feel like a border would help it stand out from everything else that's going on on our screen. So I'm going to double click in the layout and grab another sprite and I'll place it off to the side here. And for the size, we have our mini map at 128 by 128. I need to figure out how thick do I want the border. I'm gonna go with four pixels. So if I have four pixels of border on the left and four pixels of border on the right, then it's going to need to be eight pixels bigger than the map. Same with the, the top and bottom. So 128 plus eight is 136. So I'm gonna go 136 by 136. And with the paint bucket tool, I'm gonna to pick a gold color and I'm just gonna type mine in. I already have those values. 165 for the red, 140 for the green, and 55 for the blue. And then I'm gonna fill this whole square. And then for the origin, we can put this in the top left, just like our mini map. But since we know that we want a border of four pixels, I can really just make the X four and the Y four, and it'll put the origin point four pixels in on both the X and Y axis. Let's exit out of that. With that selected, I'm going to highlight the name and change it to map border, and then, we know that our mini map position is 32 by 32. I'm just gonna highlight that and control C to copy, pick our border object and paste it, control V to paste, and it pops it right into place. And if we right click on our map border object, go to Z order, send to bottom of layer, there we go. We have us a nice little border. I think it helps a lot visually. Again, uh, you can make your border however you want. This is just one method that I chose. Of course, there's probably hundreds of ways to create a border around an object. One more thing before we get out of this map. Now, if you wanted different things represented on your map, you would just repeat the process that you've already done. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to create a new object Go to Sprite, off to the side here, and I'm just gonna resize this to 64 by 64. I'm gonna put the origin in the top left, or actually the bottom left. I'm trying to keep that consistent. And then I'm gonna fill this in with a random bright pink purplish kind of color. Okay, exit out of that. And with that selected, I'm gonna just call this uh, like shops. You know, if you had trees or water, whatever you wanted represented on your map, you would create an object for it. So I'm going to pretend that we have some shops in here and I'll put one right there, maybe one up here and then say one over here. We'll make it a different size. I don't know, something like that. We wanna be able to reference these so we need to make 
an icon for it. So let's double click and get another sprite. Let's insert it off to the side. I'm going to resize this. I'll just make this one 32 by 32 just for fun. And I'm going to put the origin point in the bottom left. It has to be in the same spot as the object that you created. I put the origin in the bottom left of the shop object. So the icon origin needs to be in the bottom left as well. And then with our paint bucket tool, I'll just fill it with the same color. We can exit out of that. With that selected, I'm going to rename it icon underscore shops. And then over in the event sheet, we can pretty much copy everything that we have here. So I'm going to highlight the on start of layout event and press B to give us another sub event. And this sub event will be flush with the other sub event, but indented from the on start of layout event. So in our new sub event, I'm going to double click to go into it, go into system. I want the for each loop and for each shop object, I want to create. So add an action, go into system, create object. And that is going to be the icon shops and the layer in between quotation marks is the map layer and the X is going to be we're going to have to reference that mini map X value and then we want to add the location of our new shop object which is going to be in parentheses shops dot X times 0 0.05 end parentheses and then I'm just going to copy that and paste it into the Y and we can change our X's to Y's. And then of course, we're gonna to have to set the size the same way we did up here. So add an action, go into icon shops, and let's set the size to the width of uh, shops.width times 0 0.05 to the shops.height times 0 0.05. Let's play. And there we go. There's our shops. So we could do this 10 or 12 more times. And actually my uh, shops aren't showing up on the layout because we have them on the wrong layer. So our icon shops is on the map layer. That's good. Our shop objects need to be on the level layer. Okay, let's play that. There they are. So we didn't give them a solid behavior, so we're going through them, that's fine. But it can be any other kind of object that you would have in your game that you want represented on your map. And all you have to do is just repeat the process for each object. You create a new object of representation and then an icon for the map to represent it. That covers the first version of the mini map in this series. Most of the groundwork is laid out for us for the next two maps. So we'll be able to jump right into version two in the next video. So I'm gonna end this one here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Hit that thumbs up button for me, that helps. Do not forget to save. And we'll get started on the second version of our mini map in the next video. I'll see you there.